Ryan Wesley Routh, the man accused of attempting to assassinate Donald Trump at a Florida golf course Sunday wrote a book last year urging Iran to kill him. His self-published book, Ukraine's Unwinnable War, described the former president as a buffoon for both the 2021 Capitol riots and backing out of the Iran nuclear deal. Routh once visited Ukraine and his online footprint showed that he tried to recruit fighters for for Kiev. He portrayed himself online as a man who built housing for homeless people who tried to recruit fighters for Ukraine to defend itself against Russia. And he was a Trump supporter before he kind of grew disenchanted with Trump and turned on him, even writing a book that where he urged Iran to assassinate Trump, Biesecker said. While living in North Carolina, Routh had a handful of run-ins with the law, including in 2002, where during a traffic stop a police officer noticed that Routh had a firearm sitting next to him in the car. Routh then fled to a roofing company that he owned where he barricaded himself inside and had a three-hour standoff with police. According to charging documents, he had a fully automatic, what was described as a machine gun with him, and he was charged with possessing a weapon of mass destruction, Biesecker said. Law enforcement is still trying to pinpoint a motive for Routh's apparent assassination attempt on Trump. Authorities are still searching for what they consider a motive for Routh wanting to assassinate Trump. But what is clear from his online profile is that he had become disenchanted with a number of the former president's policy positions, Biesecker said. Ron Wesley Ruth uh, is a North Carolina native who moved to Hawaii in 2018. He portrayed himself online as a man who built housing for homeless people, who tried to recruit fighters for Ukraine to defend itself against Russia. Uh, and he was a Trump supporter before he did, kind of grew disenchanted with Trump and turned on him, even writing a book that where he urged Iran to assassinate Trump. Before moving to Hawaii, Ruth lived in Greensboro, North Carolina, where he had numerous run-ins with the law. In 2002, during a traffic stop, a police officer noticed that he had a firearm sitting next to him in the car, and Ruth then fled to a roofing company that he owned, where he barricaded himself inside and had a three-hour standoff with police. According to charging documents, he had a fully automatic, uh, what was described as a machine gun, with him and he was charged with uh, possessing a weapon of mass destruction. Uh, he was also arrested in 2010 and charged with felony possession of stolen goods after police said he used his roofing company's warehouse as a clearinghouse for stolen property that he bought from thieves and then intended to resell at a profit. With two felony convictions, it's not clear how Ruth was able to obtain the AK-style rifle that he had at the Trump golf course yesterday. In most states, those felony convictions would have barred him from either buying or possessing a firearm. Authorities are still searching for what they consider a motive for Ruth wanting to assassinate Trump. But what is clear from his online profile is that he had become disenchanted with a number of the former president's policy positions as well as uh, his continued uh, attempts to voice admiration for Russian President Vladimir Putin, uh, who invaded Ukraine. The suspect in an apparent assassination attempt on former U.S. President Donald Trump urged people to go to Ukraine and join the fight against Russia in a 2022 interview with Newsweek Romania. Trump is safe following what the FBI said appeared to be an attempted assassination while playing golf on Sunday, two months after another attempt on his life at a rally in Pennsylvania. U.S. Secret Service agents opened fire after seeing a person with a firearm near Trump's West Palm Beach Golf Club in Florida while the Republican presidential candidate was golfing. No injuries were reported. Officials say the person fled in an SUV and was later apprehended by local law enforcement. The man was identified as Ryan Wesley Routh by three law enforcement officials. The officials spoke to the Associated Press on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss the ongoing investigation. Records show Routh, 58, lived in North Carolina for most of his life before moving to Hawaii in 2018. 
In 2020, he made a social media post backing Trump's re-election, but in more recent years his posts have expressed support for Biden and Harris. In an interview conducted in 2022 by Rima Cernia, war correspondent for Newsweek Romania, he said he had gone to Ukraine to fight against Russia but his lack of military experience disqualified him from doing so. He said he had gone to Kiev to actively urge people to come from all over the world to fight, calling it, the most important thing going on in the world today. We are at a critical juncture in this war where we are sitting on the fence as far as whether good or evil is going to win, he told Cernia. If everybody is complacent and doesn't join this fight then guess who's going to win? It might take 10 years, but we're going to lose this battle if everyone around the globe does not stop what they're doing and get off the couch and come to Ukraine and then defend the human rights of everyone around the globe. To me, you know, a lot of the other conflicts are gray, but this conflict is definitely black and white. This is about good versus evil. This is a storybook, you know, any movie we've ever watched, this is definitely evil against good. I mean, we're battling a situation here where you know, the U Ukrainians and the rest of the world are caring and kind and, and generous and, and unselfish and, and take care of one another. And it's just a matter of, you know, we need to stand up for that. So, you know, we feel the pain of, of one country's failure and their conflicts. And we enjoy the successes of, of other countries that are doing good. And, and we all work together. And for some reason, Russia does not grasp this concept that we're we're all one unit and we have to get along and work together and, 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 and be normal human beings. This is 2022, we have to work together. It's, it's, it seems asinine that we have a, a leader in a country that does not understand the concept of, of being unselfish and being generous and being kind and just the basic moral values that, that are required by human beings these days. It blows my mind. Uh, my initial goal was to come and fight. I think, you know, everybody around the globe should be motivated to come here and support the Ukrainians and support the army, no matter what gender, age, anything. Everybody should be here supporting the army. But I'm 56, so initially they are like, well, I have no military experience, so they're like, you're not an ideal candidate. So they said, not right this minute. So plan B was to come here to Kiev and promote getting more people here. You know, we need thousands and thousands and thousands of people here fighting with the Ukrainians. We were at a critical juncture in this war where we are sitting on the fence as far as whether good or evil is gonna win. You know, right now we're looking at a situation where the world is, is waning and it's and it's, it's thinking that this is important or not. And we're at a point where, you know, all right, are we gonna stand for humanity, for human rights, for, for everything that, that, that is good with the world? Or are we just gonna ignore it? You know, if we if everybody is complacent and doesn't join this 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 fight, then guess who's gonna win? It might take ten years, but we're gonna lose this battle if everyone around the globe does not stop what they're doing get off the couch and come to Ukraine and, and defend defend the human rights of everyone around the globe. This is the most important thing going on in the world today. I think more emotional for me is also is just talking to the guys that have come here. You know, when you talk to a 20 year old guy that sold everything he owned to come here and fight, that is heroism. You know, he's coming here to risk his life for humanity, for the Ukrainians, you know, guys that sell everything they own to come here and support the Ukrainians while others sit at home and, and, and do nothing. You know, it's, it's totally mind blowing how we have this divide of people that are selfless and courageous and wonderful and willing to sell everything they own to come here and support, you know, you know keep people from getting killed, to shelter kids. and and protect Ukrainians and others that just, you know, want to sit at home and not. It's just, it, it, you know, it's an indictment of our entire human society to say, hey, you know, where do we stand?